Hello everyone and welcome to the Aries New Girl channel. This is going to be a sample of the happiness reading that I have on my website right now for all of you to book. Have a look at my website. I just launched it yesterday. It's a beautiful website and I'm offering this reading for all of you. But until then, this reading is your reading, Sherry. Hi Sherry, this is your happiness reading. Hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Um, before I get into this and before I get into the aspects um, of what will bring you most happiness in this lifetime at least, um, I'll just do a very quick introduction of the things that I'll be looking at um, just for you to understand where the recommendations comes, come from. So first of all, I'll be looking at the moon because the moon is, as I was saying in my um, video on the superpower of the moon, the moon is like our genetical <laughs> information that we either bring with us from a past life or if you don't believe in past lives, then we uh, bring with us from our childhood, from, from the first years of our lives, from uh, the interaction, especially with our mother. Uh, where for a long time we are one person with that person um, and uh, with our family in general. And why is it so important to understand what makes your moon happy? Because your moon will continuously act a certain way either regardless of whether you want it or not. You could just say, okay, I'll focus on my sun and I'll ignore the moon. But the moon will always come and get you, will always, uh, your impulse reactions will always have to do with the moon. Your natural state where you go to recharge your batteries, where, um, where you go in the most intimate moments, where you go by default um, in stress situations, um, that is the moon and the moon is actually your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind needs to be understood in order for you to offer it what it needs because we tend to live very much on the surface and ignore our subconscious mind but our subconscious mind is what um, is responsible for 80% of our, our actions in day-to-day -day, uh, interactions. So um, understanding it and giving it what it needs is the first step towards being and finding your happiness. The second aspect is Venus. Um, I think uh, there's not much need for me to uh, explain why Venus is important. Venus is the planet of pleasure, of what we like, of what we attract into our life and what we give off as attractive energy. Um, Venus is, tells you about how we indulge into things and what, what brings us um, pleasure, especially on a sensorial level, but on a very human interaction level as well. So uh, Venus is very important for your happiness uh, and defining it. And the third aspect, um, that's the North Node. And the North Node is not actually a planet, it's uh, your destiny in life. It's um, a point um, uh, calculated by astrologers that, that defines where you're headed, headed towards in this lifetime. And the idea here is that we come from the South Node experience and we're heading towards the North Node one. And we keep on balancing North Node and South Node uh, continuously. And at one point, um, in order to get sustainable happiness, we need to make ourselves on our path of North Node. Uh, at one point, you will see that all the South Node things that we do um, uh, don't make us happy anymore and that um, we need to follow our purpose in life in order to find sustainable happiness and uh, sustainable fulfillment in our lives. Okay, so this all being said, I'm just going to jump into the horoscope right now. I'm going to start with the moon. Um, you probably have seen my video on uh, the moon sign in Pisces. I am um, usually very much impressed and connected to this moon sign. My sun is in Pisces, my rising is in Pisces, but uh, my moon is in Aries, so kind of at the opposite pole. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for this moon because um, in my opinion, and I call it the grandiose moon, in my opinion, this moon actually has the potential to connect to the, to the universal subconscious, to the 
to the subconscious minds of all the people in the world as a whole. I, I know it sounds like big words, but um, this is a moon that feels so much. And um, Cancer moon also feels, and it feels at a very um, interpersonal level, but this moon feels so much at a greater level. This is why this moon creates such big artists like um, uh, Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, Prince, Frank Sinatra, and I could uh, go on with a list of very, first of all, very artistic, very successfully artistic personalities, and second of all, great healers, great, um, great leaders that have brought um, um, a, a change in the world and a change for the better and for healing like uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. and um, also Michelle Obama and um, it's, it's, a, it's a placement uh, here that you have with uh, Pisces and 12th house moon it's a double, a double Piscean uh, placement so it tells you that your emotional nature your subconscious nature is very much connected and in tune with everything else around you and probably this has been um, I'm going to be perfectly honest because once we're not aware of this this can be your curse uh, throughout the years so especially in young years where you identify with with the sorrows of other people and where you feel so much in tune also with your own family because that's the moon and it kind of involves also your mother but all, with everyone you feel so in tune with them that every sorrow every um uh, everything that's going on in someone else's life really uh, feels so heavy on your subconscious as well and with this placement you probably attract a lot of um, a lot of energies to you and you probably have felt at times um, overwhelmed and needed to um, to shut it down to isolate yourself and this is this is what this moon uh, does at times and this is uh, the only way to protect itself uh, from everything and your moon is also uh, trining uh, Neptune and Mars and um, opposition in opposition with Pluto so Pluto and Mars uh, kind of tell me uh, that there were even more struggles so you felt kind of you felt a pressure on your um, on your soul coming from other people and probably it has to do a lot with family um, with the mother figure it can also have something to do but you felt you felt the burden of others on yourself and um, at the same time this uh, Neptune trine kind of again emphasizes the same thing of um, of this Pisces beautiful energy so uh, now I talked about a bit about the heavy stuff, um, the, the need to deconnect from, from so strong emotions uh, that you feel around, uh, the need to deconnect from wanting to heal everyone and wanting to uh, one by one save people or uh, being so um, preoccupied with it or feeling it too intensely in you and feeling that it's uh, uh, draining you out. And... Um, Talking about the good things now, um, from my point of view, for the Pisces moon, for happiness, there are maybe three ways out. Um, and I'm going to give you the first one. The first way out, out of, um, out of feeling the burden of things, is to let your creative genius out. Um, through the fact that you can feel what's going on around you, that you get this inspiration. Inspiration is God talking to you. Inspiration is uh, you tapping into the subconscious creation of other people as well and being able to translate it. And this is what these all great ar artists have done on this earth. So creating music, writing, um, maybe, maybe also having something to do with... Um, with painting or any type of art or cinematic or um, but definitely writing in this house also working with animals with um, uh, <laughs> with uh, beautiful uh, animals or things like that everything that has to do with 
um, with what's more artistic and what's closer to someone's heart, you will excel at that. So if you're if you're deciding to go for for beautiful expression, uh, for artistic expression, that's that's the one way to be happy with a Pisces moon because this is this is the way where you are impacting also other people because Pisces moon always cares also about other people. So you want to to make it better for them. You want um, you want to save everyone in your heart. So the first way to do this is through art. So you have this brilliant genius of any type of artistic creation. Um, the second way to do it is through um, is through um, actually doing some bigger uh, scale. Um, um, operations to uh, to help people so if you're trying to help people one by one you will get lost in their sorrow and they'll drag you in uh, what you can do is help at a bigger scale help visionary helping like like a spiritual teacher like um like even someone that fights for the rights or has a, an organization for something of fighting for the rights of uh, of some group of people or uh, but mostly I think it's spiritual and it's inspiring people through uh, uh, through what you can feel and sense and I told you there's two ways to doing it Pisces usually does it through art we're not um, we're not Aquarius so we're not so much able to put it into words necessarily but we're putting it into emotion and art but you you can, of course, have have also great communication with this. Um, it's, I would say though that because you have Neptune there, probably art is the is the easier way for you. But on the other side, you're a Libra, so you could also have the gift of of good communication, and you have um, uh, Mercury uh, conjunct the Sun, so that's another way. Um, so spiritual teaching, uh, bringing changes at a greater scale, being involved in helping people at a bigger scale. This is another thing that makes you happy. And the third thing that makes you happy and that you need for yourself, I told you about this isolating from the world. Well, you need to keep this up, but um, in order to recharge your batteries from time to time, but you need to um, isolate yourself in an environment that's highly highly beautiful um, if you think of and this is what cowgirl astrologer told me in a uh, in a video that I did with her on YouTube and I was thinking yeah that's that's really true and she's also a Pisces moon and she said um, she said that Michael Jackson had Neverland uh, um, Elvis had Graceland uh, Prince had his sanctuary there um, and uh, in the end, all these spices created their magical world uh, outside of what everyone else is sees. So you need to be able to create this magical fairy tale, fairy <laughs> uh, fairyland world for yourself, where you can retreat, where you have. I, I told you, you could have like wonderful animals or. Um, uh, a beautiful nature or you know like everything that you could dream of you can have in that sanctuary of yours and this is where you re recharge your batteries from the world this is where you go into yourself and you enjoy this uh, because Pisces Pisces also as Sagittarius is the sign of expansion so you can expand beyond limits with this moon you can you can see and achieve a lot more than anyone else can but uh, sometimes you're just dragged down by the world outside you. So in this isolating yourself or in creating your safe space and sanctuary of beautiful things, you can let your imagination go loose and uh, create the most beautiful things. Um, okay, I'm going on to Venus because I'm spending a bit more, but usually Pisces Moon this, does this, so I go on and on. Um, so um, your Venus is in Libra as is your Sun but your Venus is in the sec sixth house so um, you definitely again Libra is a sign of beauty and harmony and um, and also well manners and good exchanges with people and um, you know balanced and 
fair treatment of people. Um, so you definitely like and enjoy this. This brings you happen uh, happiness. So beauty and harmony and balanced and balanced relationships with people. But beauty in general and with uh, it in the sixth house. The sixth house is the house of service on the one hand, but it's also the house of what you do every day. So I believe that if you were to work with beauty, like maybe with physical beauty, but maybe also with art, maybe with um, also in relationships to people like one on one uh, relationships that will make you very happy, especially if you're bringing a service to someone. Um, the sixth house wants wants to bring service, wants to be useful, wants to have practical solutions to help people. So this this might might be a good balance to your moon that wants to help people at the emotional level, and uh, here you bring a service. But it's again the same thing. You need beauty, you need balance, you need harmony, um, and this is uh, this is what you can offer. I think you can heal other people uh, through beauty. And beauty is what what you most likely indulge in and what you most likely uh, like. So a beautiful, balanced life is very important uh, with this type of placement. Um, also diet and things like that. I, would, I, I believe with Venus there, you should also take care of your diet and have, have a pretty good diet um, as well. Um, okay, so I said, I said in both cases there is beauty and beauty is your focus. Um, uh, but again, when we're talking about the North Node, your North Node is in the sixth house and it is in Leo. So that service that I was talking about is really there. You want to be of service. You want to practically help others. You want to offer your support and you want to um, to shine doing it because it's in Leo. So you need to shine. You need to be at the top of, uh, of the admiration of people, but for uh, this for your practical solutions that in this case might have to do with beauty and definitely they have to do with being of service. North node is that side of us that <laughs> is going to always come back and uh, drag us on the right purpose. But many times we feel like the south node pulls us back. And it's in this case, your south node is in the 12th house um, as well. So many times you might feel lost in thought and in spirituality and um, don't have the practical solutions or you feel overwhelmed uh, by the world and want to help but don't know how to. Uh, but this North Node wants you to be pragmatic, wants you to be center stage and have practical solutions to be of service to other people. Um, and this is what will ultimately make you happy on the long run, what will sustainably make you happy if you bring other people um, service but at the same time taking a center stage this is this is your path in life and ultimately this is what um, what we're heading towards when we uh, <laughs> when we look at our life path through astrology um, and even if it at times we feel we're off the right uh, wrong or on the wrong track we always come back to that or need to come back to that to actually feel happy. So that's, that's the biggest secret of astrology. If you follow your north node, um, but by using your south node um, uh, potential, you, you can get to, uh, to sustainable happiness in your life. But first of all, take care of the, your moon, take care of your Venus. Um, so be sure to bring beauty in your life. Be sure to... Um, uh, to have enough time for yourself and uh, recharge your battery in a beautiful, beautiful environment, in the environment of your dreams. Be sure to, to be of service to other people through the beauty that you can create, maybe art. Um, and be sure to, uh, to take this service role uh, as, um, as important and to, to not be afraid to take center stage. Uh, both Libra and uh, Pisces are modest signs, signs that uh, give room to the others uh, 
and uh, don't go so much into the Leo way of I'm taking the stage, uh, it's, it's all eyes on me, but this North Node kind of tells you, no, your role in this lifetime is to take the stage and get all eyes on you and uh, help people through this. So um, definitely a beautiful mixture of Pisces, Libra, um, uh, beautiful, artistic, sensitive, good with people, but be, care, be careful to take care of your soul, be careful to, um, to recharge your batteries, be careful not to want to fight battle by battle, but uh, look at the bigger picture and how you can shine and let your light shine on as many people as possible without being dragged in individual problems um, of people because uh, that's the biggest risk for a Pisces moon. This was my happiness reading for you, Sherry. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your feedback. I'm really um, looking forward to hearing uh, if, this, if this is accurate and uh, how you feel about it. Um, for anyone else wanting a happiness reading, they are all on my website now. Um, uh, please go out there, uh, arismoongirl.com, just to see the site, just to see the readings. Um, and book one if you want to know how to make yourself happy for a longer time or how to find your your inner purpose and what what makes you sustainably happy for longer uh, until next time my name is moon girl i care about the stars but most of all i care about you thank you sherry so much for watching my videos it was a pleasure doing this video for you bye bye guys